and welcome to my channel. My name's Ali and today we're going to go through five more myths regarding chinchillas. Now I do already have two videos already on my channel relating to myths about chinchillas but there are so many I thought we'd do a third. Okay, so chinchillas expected lifespan is 20 plus years. Now this is a little bit of a myth because yes, chinchillas can live over 20 years with the oldest known chinchilla being 29 years and 229 days. So very nearly 30 years. And yes, it is very important to make sure people are aware when they buy chinchillas that they can potentially live that long. They really are a long-term commitment. Now there is a myth going around now that the average expected lifespan of a chinchilla is 20 plus years, which is actually completely untrue. So the key word here is average, the average life expectancy of a chinchilla. Now this is actually far more closer to 15 years rather than 20 plus years. Yes, they can live 20 plus years, but the average life expectancy of a chinchilla is much closer to 15. So I suppose it's a little bit like humans. Some, some people can live 100 plus years and some people die much sooner. And um, just because people can live 100 plus years does not mean that all people will. So the average life expectancy for people, say for example in the US in 2023, is actually 76.4 years. Not over 100 years, but unfortunately that logic doesn't seem to be applying to chinchillas. So people are saying, you know, chinchillas can live 20 plus years and you know, they should be living 20 plus years, when in reality, they, they actually, the average is much, much less than that. And the problem with this myth is that it gives people a great sense of guilt when their chinchilla dies before the age of 20. For example, I had a person reach out to me quite recently who said she was deeply concerned and she felt very, very guilty because her chinchilla died at 18 years of age and she had heard that chinchilla's average lifespan was 20 plus years. So she was just like, what have I done wrong? Did I care for them incorrectly? Because they didn't reach their average lifespan. And I had to explain to her, no, your chinchilla at the age of 18 was already in the old age bracket. And you've given your chinchilla an absolutely fantastic life and they have probably died of old age. So 18 years for chinchillas is about the same as late 70s, early 80s for a human. So, so her chinchilla lived to her late 70s and 80s which is about right for a chinchilla. So yes, they can live massively longer than that, but it's not the average, it's not the norm. So chinchilla's feet should be soft and any dry and hard patches on a chinchilla's feet need to be moisturized. Please don't do this, this is a myth. In the wild, chinchillas would actually run, jump and hop on some really quite unforgiving surfaces, rough, hard, jagged and sharp rocks, dusty areas, prickly vegetation. Their feet really do go through the mill. So how on earth do they keep their feet free from injury when they are jumping on all these really, really harsh surfaces? And the answer is they build up natural calluses. Now these are hard patches on the chinchilla's feet and actually protect the chinchilla's feet. So in captivity, you do actually really want to encourage these natural calluses to form. It helps protect your chinchilla's feet from injury. For example, having your chinchilla on lots of different surfaces will encourage these natural calluses to form, which actually help prevent your chinchilla's feet from becoming injured and cut and sore. If you moisturise your chinchilla's feet or have your chinchilla solely on soft surfaces, they are never going to build up those natural calluses and your chinchilla's feet are going to be more prone to things like injury, sores, bleeding, all that kind of thing. So the only time I would say to moisturise your chinchilla's feet is if they're cracked and bleeding then they might need moisturising so they can treat them. But if your chinchilla's feet are cracked and bleeding, it might be worth a trip to your vet as well because you want to rule out the possibility of things like bumblefoot. 
So if your chinchillas feet are just a little bit dry and hard, please leave them alone. Moisturising them can actually do more damage than good. Okay, following on from the last one. Now this one is going to be very, very, very controversial because it is such a widely believed myth that it's almost turned into fact. And that is, why are floors cause bumblefoot? So there are many reasons to dislike why are floors, but um, yeah, this isn't necessarily one of them. So what is bumblefoot? Bumblefoot is a bacterial infection, so it's caused by bacteria and it is generally thought of as infected pressure sores. So what causes pressure sores in chinchillas? Well, pressure sores are caused by chinchillas being on the same sort of surfaces constantly. So whether it's soft surfaces, smooth surfaces, straight surfaces with no difference in shape or surface texture, that can lead to the chinchilla using the same part of their feet constantly which causes pressure on the chinchilla's feet and can cause pressure sores. Now once the chinchilla has pressure sores they're more, they're more vulnerable to things like infection. So you might be thinking if bumblefoot is caused by infected pressure sores so it's infected with bacteria it must be unsanitary conditions that causes bumblefoot and whilst yes that would increase the risk of bumblefoot. Having unsanitary and dirty cages on its own will not cause bumblefoot. It's a combination of the two. It, so even if you have your chinchillas in a really sanitised condition, so you regularly clean them out and you scrub down the cages rigorously and regularly, you still might end up with bumblefoot if you have pressure sores because no matter what, your chinchillas probably will come into contact with urine or waste products at some point in your chinchilla's cage. It only takes a little bit of urine or a little bit of chinchilla waste to actually get that bacteria into the pressure sores and cause an infection. So please don't think because a chinchilla owner has got them or foot, their chinchilla cage must be dirty. So. So quite ironically, wire floors can actually help prevent bumblefoot. Why, you might ask? Because wire floors are considered a quite uneven surface. So your chinchilla has to use different parts of their feet in order to balance on a wire floor, which actually reduces the pressure on your chinchilla's feet and therefore they're less likely to get pressure sores. So wire floors can also build up your chinchilla's natural calluses, which in turn can help prevent injury on your chinchilla's feet. So the reason why I dislike this myth so, so much is because people get complacent and they think because they haven't got their chinchilla on wire floors, they're just not going to get bumblefoot, which isn't the case at all. Um, any chinchilla owner can get bumblefoot, whether it's a chinchilla that's on wire floors, whether it's a chinchilla that's on tiled floor, or, or a chinchilla that is entirely on fleece. So you're probably more likely to get bumblefoot if you have a chinchilla that has a cage entirely covered in fleece. Because not only are their chinchilla feet going to be soft, same sort of surface can cause pressure sores plus fleece is a bit of a harbour for bacteria so your chinchilla may come into bacteria more easily than other surfaces so this is why i dislike this myth is because people just assume that because they haven't got wire floors in their cage they are not going to get bumblefoot so why does wire floor get such a bad rep in terms of bumblefoot it's because People just assume that wire floor is going to injure their feet, wire floor is going to give them pressure sores, which isn't true at all. If you want to know how to treat bumblefoot, I don't feel like I'm the best person or the most qualified person to actually ask regarding that, because in my 28 years of owning chinchillas and breeding chinchillas, I have around 50 chinchillas. I have not ever had bumblefoot, so I've never had to treat it myself. So, but there are videos out there on how to treat bumblefoot and what you need to do. I would recommend going to your vet because obviously they need antibiotics if they've got a bacterial infection. There are things that you can do like soaks, I think, and that sort of thing. So have a look out for videos on that. There are many, many valid reasons to dislike wire floor, but bumblefoot, it ain't one of them. Don't 
So giving your chinchilla a raisin or some dried fruit or nuts or seeds will kill your chinchilla. Now, this is a myth that's being spread around by pretty much everyone nowadays and it's because dried fruits and seeds and nuts are not a good choice for treats because they're quite unhealthy and could potentially lower your chinchilla's lifespan but more recently it's been going around that basically it will kill your chinchilla so if you've given your chinchilla a nut or a raisin oh my gosh you've killed your chinchilla they're gonna die and it's just not the case we've gone we seem to go from one extreme to the other and it's normally somewhere in the middle that it should be so for example when i first got my chinchilla nearly 30 years ago i got them from a I got them from a pet store that actually specialised in nothing but chinchillas. They had their own chinchilla pellets that were actually milled specially from them, which were sold all around the country. And they used to sell bags of treats for your chinchilla as well. And there used to be things in there like dried banana, coconut, raisins, rose hips, all kinds of things that you maybe shouldn't be giving your chinchilla. The person that owned this shop had been breeding chinchillas for years and years and years and was well known. Their pellets were well known around the country. They were really quite specialists and they used to give their chinchillas this stuff as treats. So we used to give it as treats, I did. But now more recently, obviously more research has come out into the fact that actually it's not that good for your chinchilla. But now they seem to be pushing the idea that if you give this to your chinchilla, your chinchilla is going to die. And it's just simply not the case, it's scaremongering. And the reason why they're doing this is yes, they want to help chinchillas lead a healthy life and have the longest life possible. But it really is really, really scaremongering at this stage. So that if anyone even puts a piece of fruit near their chinchilla's mouth, it's just like they've caused the massive crime of the century. I would reiterate to please not feed your chinchillas nuts, raisins and dried fruit because it's just not healthy for them. But I'm not going to go so far as to say it's going to kill your chinchilla immediately if you give your chinchilla a nut or a raisin. Because years ago I was doing it like everybody else. Obviously I don't do it anymore because I know it's not a responsible thing to do. It's not the best thing for your chinchilla. Chinchillas will only breed if they're happy and if they have the perfect conditions and environment. Now this is a load of absolute twaddle. Complete and utter rubbish. Like with most animals, the drive to reproduce is so strong because it's what they are born to do. In terms of e evolution, you were born to reproduce, to pass on your genetics to the next generation. That is the whole purpose of most living beings. So that drive is so strong that even if they're in the worst conditions possible, they still will try and breed. Yes, you may not have the same productivity as someone that's got a chinchilla in a lovely environment with the best care possible, but you, they will still breed in pretty horrendous environments. And the reason why I really, really detest this myth so, so much is because it's like a get out of free card for really, really bad breeders that have horrendous conditions for their chinchillas. Because they'll just say, well, if they weren't happy and they didn't have the envir environment, they wouldn't breed. It's just complete nonsense. I have seen chinchillas in deplorable conditions that have still been breeding. It may harm the amount of chinchillas you have born, and if you have one male to six or seven females, it doesn't matter because you're still going to get some chinchilla babies out of that. Chinchilla breeders that are actually quite conscientious and, and do have their chinchillas in lovely environments, but for some reason one pair just isn't breeding, and that could be a lot of things. It could be the fact that one or both of them are infertile. It could be that it's just a bad pairing. They're just not getting along and they're not going to produce kits. But on the whole, chinchillas will breed quite readily what, with whatever conditions you have them in. It's just a way for bad chinchilla breeders to feel better about themselves and think, well, if they, if they weren't happy, they wouldn't be breeding. It's just nonsense. So I hope you've enjoyed my five myths about chinchillas. Let me know in the comments if there's any chinchilla myths that you didn't know or any more that you think that 
are out there that you need me to cover and I will see you in another video soon. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.